In this week's episode of Coffee with the Candidates, I met up with gubernatorial candidate Stephen Wagaspak to chat over coffee at Frank's Restaurant about where he stands on key voter issues, including the state's income tax, insurance crisis, and brain drain. Coffee with the Candidates is part of LPP's ongoing gubernatorial election coverage. Stephen Wagaspak is running for governor as a Republican. He lives in Baton Rouge and worked for 10 years as the CEO of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. He also served in former Governor Bobby Jindal's administration as chief of staff. Well, hi, Stephen. Thank you so much you. for joining me here at Frank's Restaurant. It's my honor. Okay. Anytime. Well, before we get started with yeah. our chat, how about a cup of fresh coffee? I would love some. Okay. Never a bad time for me for coffee. Thank you so much. You probably need a lot of it on the campaign trail. Nine stop, 24 7. <laughs> All right, so viewers, here is how our coffee chat is going to go. Each of the candidates received the same five questions ahead of time. Each candidate has seven minutes to answer the five questions in total. I will be keeping track of the time and just reminding the candidates of how much time and how many questions we have left so that we can finish them all in these seven allotted minutes. So before we get started, let's, uh, let's, do let's it. take a sip. All right, let's test the Frank's coffee. Strong. Delicious, hot, strong. Okay. That's where you want to be. And here we go. I'm going to set the timer on start and first question. Let's do it. Louisiana is experiencing an insurance crisis as auto, property, and flood insurance rates continue to rise and some insurance companies quit writing policies altogether. How will you address the affordability and accessibility of insurance for Louisianians? It's one of the most important issues facing Louisiana today. Too many families can't afford to live here anymore because of the, the, the cost increases coming in their mailbox. It's several things. First of all, we have to attract those smaller insurers back to our market. We have to attract the reinsurance back to the market. The legislature took some steps to do that. We have to go much further. We make it an easy market for them to come in and operate in. That gives giving them more flexibility to maneuver th throughout the year. Because right now they have to leave instead of be able to adjust some of their, their their processes. The second thing is we have to improve our legal climate. Right now we know that some of these excessive claims that are happening are driving insurers out of the state. We have a scarlet letter on our chest as a state. We have to take that letter off make a welcoming environment so they can come in and we can uh, not scare them away. The third thing is people are sick and tired of what I call the adjuster shuffle. People have a storm, hit their house, they go through one, two, three, four, five, six adjusters having to repeat their claim every single time. It's ridiculous. I want to work and build some, in our higher ed universities, some adjuster colleges so that we can train people in Louisiana to be adjusters. So next time there's a storm, you got Boudreaux's and Thibodeau's in this area who can be that adjuster, be there for the long haul, help people get their claims done faster. So we re rebuild the market by attracting smaller insurers, getting reinsurance right, improving our legal climate to take some of that necessary cost out, and, and stopping the adjuster shuffle, shuffle, training people here to be adjusters so you get a clear, quick answer and check when you get hit. With the state's temporary 0.45 sales tax set to expire in mid-2025, declining gas taxes people pay at the pump, and other changing circumstances affecting our tax structure, some say Louisiana is headed toward a fiscal cliff. What is your plan to create a sustainable tax base and a competitive tax environment? The biggest issue facing Louisiana is the cost on working families, the cost driving families out of the state. Inflation is absolutely smothering working families. That is our biggest crisis. So that temporary tax was passed and set to expire in 2025, it needs to expire. We cannot keep putting cost after cost on the backs of small business and working families. So I plan to absolutely let that, that expire. But that means what we need to do is we need to take a, I'm, when I get in, I'm gonna do an external audit of every single agency we have in Louisiana and release those findings to the public. The programs that are working well, I want to invest in more and fortify. The programs that are failing or not proving to be uh, taxpayer responsible, we're going to either reform or get rid of. So we're going to shrink government in those spots, fund government in those other spots, but that tax needs to expire. But that only works if you grow the economy between now and then. The best way to provide success in Louisiana is grow the economy, create opportunity for all. That's improving our workforce development, training kids for the jobs of today, attracting new industries, letting that tax roll off, getting that cost burden off of the back of working families. That way we can have a budget that's responsible, a budget that's effective, but more importantly, a budget that's lower and lower taxes for working families that are struggling right now to, to just basically afford basic services in a rising inflation template that they have right now. 
Louisiana has some of the highest incarceration and recidivism rates in the nation. How are you going to lower crime and improve public safety? Public safety is a top issue throughout the state. It's not just an urban area, rural area, it's everywhere. And there's several factors on it. One, we need more law enforcement on the streets. We're about 200 down in state police. We have to train more. We have to do more training academies. You have to pay them and back them up. Too often over the last couple of years, police feel like no one has their back. I will have their back and I will back them and, and I will pay them. So training cops, getting that in. The second thing is technology. People don't want to testify anymore because they're scared of retribution. So body cams, license plate readers, street side cams in high crime areas or in, in main business areas can prove some of those cases without jeopardizing people to have to testify. The third thing is there's a juvenile violent crime crisis in this state. Kids 14 to 19 year old are, are creating some of these crimes because they know that's a catch and release template in Louisiana right now. They can't hold them in adult prison, they get released immediately. So I want to partner with local areas, find some juvenile facilities so we can take these kids off the streets and those that need remediation, help them get that training. And those that need to be brought off the streets, do that as well. Recent studies show that sea levels are rising faster than we can rebuild the coast, a consequence of climate change. Renewable energy sources such as wind, water, solar power, that can help combat climate change. What is your stance on developing renewable energy sources in Louisiana? I'm an all of the above energy guy. I love traditional oil and gas. I love the new technology, green technology. I love it all. I think Louisiana needs to be epicenter of all of it. If the federal government would get off the back of Louisiana and allow us to produce natural gas in, in, in the Gulf of Mexico right now, we could fuel clean natural gas for the whole world. We could distribute that out to the entire international economy. We could be creating Louisiana jobs right now. It's the federal government that's our problem. But I will tell you, a lot of the traditional oil and gas companies right now, they're the ones putting major investment dollars in R&D for, for solar, for geothermal, for carbon capture, et cetera. We need to embrace those next generation technologies also. And the people in Louisiana who know how to inject a hole and build a pipeline today can do the same thing for renewable resources in the future. I want to be all the above and support existing and the next generation. So our last question, statistics show that young people are moving out of Louisiana for better educational and business opportunities and quality of life. How do you intend to stop this so-called brain drain and make Louisiana more attractive for younger generations? And you have a minute 20 left. This is why I'm running for governor. The brain drain has been killing us for years. We have lost one family after another for decades in Louisiana, and we've shrugged our shoulders like there's nothing we can do about it. That is a lie. The truth is we need new leadership in the capital who are focused on, on creating an environment that has jobs for every single person in this state. Not everyone has to go to a four-year school. We have to revamp our high schools. And if you want to go to a four-year or straight to the workforce or anywhere in between, create pathways for each of those kids. We've got a high poverty population that we have to put into this workforce. It starts with workforce training, and I will focus on that. The last thing is young people People leave not just for jobs but also entrepreneurial activity bike trails fun fun things to do no litter on the highways we have to focus on that quality of life piece along with a strong job market that is fueled by a, a workforce development program that works all of that works hand in glove I'm gonna get that done when I'm as governor and I'm gonna stop the brain drain once and for all lovely and guess what you did this in six minutes 35 seconds boom see I thought I was running late Oh, well done. That, sounds, that, that does a lot of information to pack in seven minutes. Now, before we go, yeah. I have one last question. All right. Biscuits or beignets? I love them both, but I'm going to go biscuits. Biscuits it is. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you. This program is made possible in part by Frank's Restaurant, a place known for the gathering of friends, family, and colleagues, where deals are signed over a handshake and a biscuit. For information on catering menus and locations, go to franksrestaurantla.com.